Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Claire Reynolds and I am the CEO and headmistress at Boss Lady Beauty Academy. In this short video, I'm gonna show you, my future lash artist and even my current lash artist, how to use the newest and latest trend in the beauty industry, which is the UV light lash application system, as you see here in front of me. So our setup is any basic setup that you would set up for your normal application would work perfectly fine. The only things that are going to be different is bonding and priming are optional for this service because the light cures the adhesive instantly, then you don't have to worry about bonding the lashes to finish that curing process and priming the lashes as long as you do a thorough lash bath. But both of them are optional. Priming is ideal. Bonding is a little extra step if you want to just be sure that you have gotten a complete seal and a complete bond on that extension. So I've got all of my normal supplies and I've got a couple of extra things that I'm going to go over with you next. So extra, I have some UV light glasses. They can be really fancy expensive ones. They can be inexpensive ones. They are just glasses designed to protect your light from the UV exposure, which you don't have to worry too much about because the application process is actually directed towards the client the whole time and their skin is what will be receiving the UV light and only for a couple of seconds at a time. So you're never really looking directly in the light, which is the biggest, I would say, thing you don't want to do. Other than that, we've got a UV light specific eyelash extension adhesive. This is a clear one. I have yet to see a black one on the market, so clear is all that's currently out. I have personally tried using uh, our BAB, which is another clear adhesive, I'm sorry, not BAB, our, um, I can't think of the name of it. Transparency, duh, I made it, and of course, I don't even remember the name. I've tried using Transparency, which is also a clear adhesive, it's got a, a one to two second dry time with the UV light system, and it does not work. So when they say using this system, you do have to buy the UV light. You do have to buy the adhesive to go with it. Otherwise, it will not bond. So I'm going to put a little picture up here or here somewhere of the light of the adhesive that I'm using in this video. But as new adhesives come to the market, I'm sure that you can interchange. The extension that you use does not matter. You can use any extension. The last thing that you are adding to your application process is going to be the UV light itself. So in this video, I'm using the beam light system. It is a very moderately priced system in my personal opinion. If you're just starting out, it may seem on the higher side, but because of the application of it, you are able to save on like the bonding step. You are getting better retention. Once you get the system down, you are moving faster. So it is beneficial in a lot of ways to go ahead and front that upfront cost. In the light itself, you have the light and you have a foot pedal. I've only seen one advertisement for a UV light that is on the actual tweezer, and I have not been able to find it since. So I do think that would be a really, e a much easier way to do the system than the foot pedal, but the foot pedal is what we have now as technologies emerge. Then you'll be able to transition to a UV light on your actual tweezer to make the curing process easier. You have a foot pedal, which I'm picking up here, and the light. It is an adjustable bendable arm so it'll move down at all times so you can move it to where you need it in the application process as you're getting started that's going to slow you down but as you get faster and faster and more comfortable with the light it will be second nature especially for my professional artists who are already out there working you're just tweaking your system a little bit so when i say you're never going to look directly into the light this is what the light looks like it's always pointing down and it's bright in here, so you probably can't see it very well, but the light is on now, and it is a direct hit to where I want it to be. So there's never a situation where me working, I'm gonna be able to stare into the light. That would be silly, it's not gonna happen. So I've got to do a couple of things before I get started, and while I do those things, I'll talk through them what, I, what I'm doing. So obviously I don't have our client yet, we'll bring our client in a little bit later in the video. My normal setup station is over here. I've got my lash bath, my taping, my uh, four by fours. I've got all of the things that I need to do my application. I've got my tweezers, my double-sided tape. I've got my, I'm going to use a tile for my lashes. I'm going to use foam tape on top of my 
client's eyelid to protect that eyelid from the UV light. I've got a glue shaker. I've got my glasses, my water, sanitizer, EPA, the whole normal thing. Now I'm going to adjust the foot pedal for my beam light. So for my light, you have to put your foot pedal somewhere where it is actually going to be effective. Meaning if you sit in a saddle chair and your legs are kind of open, I have it on my right side. So I am able to get up close to my client like I normally would. And when I'm ready for that light to go, push my foot down. So I'll make a separate little video and kind of stitch it in here somewhere so you can see me actually pushing the foot pedal. But I will give you one pro tip. The higher the chair, the easier to push the foot pedal. So that's the basics. Once we have our client, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what the UV light system is actually doing. So stay tuned for part two of this video and I will see you then. Okay, so I went ahead and changed my mind a little bit. We're gonna do it a little differently. Before we lay our client down and actually apply extensions and use the UV light, I want to kind of talk through what's actually happening in this process. So the UV light glue is still a cyanoacrylate glue, which is what bonds are cures to, so that the lashes will adhere to the natural lash. So in this application, what we're doing is the same process. We're just following through to the cure. So we are going to isolate. We're going to dip our extension into our UV light glue. We're going to place that extension on the natural lash. I personally like to place on the top in most scenarios, but if you need to place on the side, you can. Least likely scenario, I'm gonna place underneath. Top is my first choice. Either side is gonna be my second choice. And then in order for this liquid to actually stay on the natural lash, you have to hit it with the light. So unlike regular glue that has a one to three second or five to 10 second or 0.5 second dry time, the dry time in this process is basically non existent. This adhesive in my research and my practice has not sat on a lash and started to dry without the application of the light. So it's very important that you go in and you have your light positioned above your client where you need it before you actually dip and place that extension. The benefit to using the UV light, however, is because the glue will not dry or cure before the light hits it, you have the option of isolating, dipping, placing, or picking up your extension, dipping it in your adhesive, isolating and then placing so you've got some wiggle room you've got some ways to work through it and you can go in and do your application in a way that's better for you this is very beneficial for lash artists who are very new to the industry and don't have a, a set practice or a set routine that works for you you're still learning you're able to make the adjustments a lot easier for the artists who are well established, you have a routine, you have a hand motion, you have tweezers that you love, you have the whole kit and caboodle, adding in the UV light system and working with this instead of regular glue and the nano misting and bonding and doing all the extra is going to be a little bit of a workaround because now you have to incorporate your feet to turn on the light and you have to work with adjusting this light where you need it for your client. So with that, I believe we are ready. Yes, we're ready to actually work with our client. So we're gonna go grab our client and we'll be right back. Okay, so before we start, I just wanna go ahead and say that my nails look awful in this video. So ignore them now. What you see me doing here is I have taped the client's upper and lower lashes and I am preparing my adhesive. I have already primed and I have fan dried so that I can do this application. So off on camera, I'm prepping my adhesive, but I wanted to show you this section specifically because I like to cover both the top lash line and under the bottom lashes, of course. We also have black gel pads that will do this, but because these are foam gel pads and they're so thick, 
they work to block the light out as well. So in this um, scenario, I've got foam pads over the top lash line and I use them to pull up the lashes and cover. Now the lights are off in the room because that's typically how I like to work with an application, but obviously you can have the lights on. It has no bearing on the UV application. I've got my safety goggles. We're using pre-made fans in its applications for fullness and time. We've got our UV light set up. I have checked the foot pedal and I have adjusted it over the section that I'm working on. So in this case with the UV light, as opposed to bouncing back and forth, it makes more sense to work section by section, starting from either the outer or the inner in or out. So that way you can apply it right next to each other. I'm gonna voice over uh, the ending part so that we can talk about how the adhesive works and how long, but essentially two to three seconds on, two to three times, to cure the lash. So I'm gonna do it so you can see it in real time. I'm gonna do my isolation. It's so funny trying to isolate on camera because I could isolate with my eyes closed and then as soon as I'm being seen, and then we test it. And as you can see, it is cured and I am able to safely lash the lash right next to it without them getting stuck as long as I maintain proper isolation. So I'm going to have my camera woman, Miss Kay, go in a little closer and just zoom in on the lash itself after I isolate it. There we go. So going to dip like I would normally dip, place, cure. So, I did not cure it fast enough, and it is not going to stick. So, I'm going to drop this one down. I'm going to grab another one, and I'm going to show you what it looks like when it is actually cured versus it not. And it is stuck on the lash and it won't get stuck to its neighbor or fall off. So I can move that over. In this small section, I am showing you with no the fear difficulty of it shutting that off you're going to run into when adjusting the UV the lamp above your right client to it. and kind of working. Mm -hmm. As you can see, I've done Thank about you. a third, I guess, I, or just the corner, I would say, of the right eye. There's nothing on the left just yet. And you can see me curing the whole set that we've already placed and constantly working through adjusting that light. So that's where the learning curve is going to come in because now you have to get that light to beam directly over the placed extension. Otherwise, it will not cure, meaning it will not dry. It will not be bonded to the actual natural lash. So here you're just watching some regular working through the process and at the end of this video, I'm going to go through the step-by-step -step protocol and you'll just get to see a little bit more flow as far as what it looks like to perform this application. I'm also going to have a student step in and actually practice the application so that you can see it from someone who has never touched a device, how simply they flow in. Okay, our student has transitioned in, as you can see, by the much better nails than mine. But she got a three-second explanation of the process. It's same as any other application. And she was able to get a lash on quickly. At this point, I am transitioning. So I wanted to take a moment to show you how the adhesive actually cures. I went in to get a new glue drop, which I recommend you do every 20 to 30 minutes because it does get a little tacky. But as you can see, it is rock solid. So for your understanding, the adhesive will not start the drying or curing process until it has been hit under the light. The adhesive in the front ring is rock solid because I cured it under the light to dispose of it. The last step that you're seeing here is the final cure. And the reason we do a final cure is that we want to make sure that we went in and actively, fully, 100% cured each glue drop that we put on. So everything is 
situated where we need it. We've done a couple of brush tests to make sure nothing was shed. And we are going through for two to three passes of two to three seconds and curing the entire lash line. And just like that, we are done with the full set of UV light volume lash application with pre-made fans. As you see here, I am using the bonder and a fan just to make sure I do a final bond after that final cure. This is an optional step, but again, more is more in this scenario. It's not going to hurt the lashes at all because they are fully cured. So I went in with my bonder. I did some more brushing and I used a fan to make sure that there were no lingering fumes in or around the client's eyes when they open. That way their lashes, um, I'm sorry, their eyes are not red at all. I noticed for those that are allergy sensitive, this final fan and bond does help, but it is again an optional step. I just like to do it to make sure that I'm giving my client the best advantage possible. So now let's go into the actual step-by-steps as promised. While you just watch me check my client's lashes. Also, her lid is normally puffy. It is not because of the lashes. Did check on that before we started. Alrighty, let's talk through the steps. We're going to move right to step 12, which is our lash bath. Step 13, which is our prep or taping. Step 14, our priming, which is optional, but done in this video. Step 15, adjusting the lamp over our first section, testing that it's six to eight inches away from the lashes so that the center of the light hits the lashes, adjusting your foot pedal and dispensing your adhesive. Step 16, dispense the adhesive. Step 17, isolation and placement. This is the normal steps that you would do in any application, but now you're gonna use the UV light in two to three second increments with two to three passes per lash. So two to three passes per lash on for two to three seconds at a time. After that, 18 is the final cure of all lashes. Again, two to three passes of two to three seconds each, moving the light from the outside to the inside of the lash line. Step 19 is our bonding, also optional. And step 20, untaping the client. Very basic, normal step-by-steps. -step. So you're just adding in the UV light application, which is only the curing process, and then a final cure. And just like that, we are done. Thank you so much for watching. I am going to be recording more formal videos, step-by-step, section-by-section, and putting them in the Ball City Beauty Online course for our current, future, and graduates. And I wanted to give everyone an opportunity to just see what the process looks like. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.